Bennett, and I am the clinical supervisor at Riverside Recovery over in Lewiston. And um, I'll let Ashley introduce herself. Hi, I'm Ashley Dodd, and I am a certified peer recovery coach with First Step for Life um, Recovery Center. I currently am working in Orofino, but I kind of go back and forth between Orofino, Lewiston, Grangeville, all the places. Well, in that room full of people, I'm assuming is the Lake County Recovery Center. So they are welcome to pipe in and share whatever they want to share while we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, next slide. Okay, so when I put some of these slides together, I kind of wanted to talk about what recovery centers are. I think a lot of times there's misunderstandings or confusion or misperceptions about what a recovery center is, what their role is, how do they fit within our overall um, community and our system that we of care that we have. So part of what we're going to talk about today is just some of the basic guiding principles, I get like the slide says, and some of the functions of what the recovery centers are for the state of Idaho. I don't know if recovery centers are different in different places. Um, but I have to say from my experience at a treatment center, uh, the value that peers have, whether they're peer support specialists or recovery coaches, um, I think we can't take that for granted. We have to figure out how we utilize peers in all the different levels of care. Um, and so I can remember I started working at Health and Welfare uh, in 2006. And shortly after that, we actually hired some peers. Uh, it wasn't really a big thing within the state. Um, but uh, but quickly, quickly. Sorry, somebody's echoey. Um, but like, I quickly recognized the benefit of it. We didn't have a lot of support with the state for uh, helping peers understand what their role is. We didn't have the credentialing and certification process that we have right now. Uh, and so I think Idaho, in my mind, is actually kind of leading the way when it comes to peer work. And I think we need to be really excited about that. And we need to figure out how we can um, promote the work that all of our peers do. Ashley, you're um, welcome to pipe in at any time. So I was thinking we just sort of go over like what, when we talk about the role of a peer, you know, what is that role? Uh, and so SAMHSA has these 10 guiding principles of recovery and when you look at kind of the role of a recovery center, they're guided by a bunch of these different principles of what recovery looks like. So recovery emerges from hope, right? So um, we are gonna be strengths-based. What is it that we can find that we can offer hope to another person? We are gonna let the person that comes to us drive what that looks like. And I think that can be a little different in treatment programs versus a recovery center. Sometimes treatment programs can be, sometimes the courts are involved, sometimes um, family members are involved. And so sometimes there might be a few other influences that can really guide it. But recovery centers, in my mind, are really driven by that individual that's coming there. If I can chime in on that one, well, and then actually the first three, you know, coming from um, a, a peer recovery coach, um, it, what I, I feel is really important and what we have to remember as peers is our stories, we've been through a lot of what other people are going through and we get to model recovery for these people uh, who are coming in to meet with us. So, um, you know, without sharing our whole life stories, you know, we get to, you know, say like, hey, you know, I've been there, you know, I was in prison, I know, I, I've been homeless and on the streets too, you know, and this is what I had to do. But, you know, as, as a person who's also in recovery, like you, you have to find what works for you. So that, you know, that, that many pathways to recovery, um, you know, 
not everybody gets the same thing out of 12 step programs. Not everybody, um, you know, can, can do different kinds of recovery. Some, some people, they really do have to do some real hard digging to find out what exactly does work for them. Um, and then what I say as a coach, when I'm sitting with this person is you're in the driver's seat, I'm in the passenger seat, just cheering you on, you know, like, I'm not going to tell you what you have to do and how you have to do it, but I'm here to help you find which way is the right way for you and um you know I'm, I'm here to help and support you in whatever way that i can well and i think, well, that, I think that, oh that's okay sorry i'm echoing sorry that was, so i think the many pathways is important i think a lot of times treatment has um been struggled with do we deal with mental health or do we deal with addiction first and um i think we're getting better but treatment can be a slow shift at times. And I feel like recovery centers have done a great job at embracing somebody where they're at um, and just kind of jumping in and doing the work that they need to do. Um, so then we have, it's holistic. Uh, recovery centers are supported by peers and allies. Um, they're gonna build relationships. The one thing that I can tell you from my experience working with our recovery center is that they have amazing relationships with um, landlords here in our community with different businesses for volunteer work. Um, and I use that as often as I can um, to help my clients kind of build those connections um, and do all of that work. And that has been invaluable. I can't express how important that has been. Um, I think the rest kind of makes sense. It's going to be culturally based. It's going to be, um, I think most everything we do nowadays is going to be pretty trauma informed. Um, working within with the community, the strengths that we have and the resources that we have and then recovery is based on respect. So respecting where somebody's at what their their story is. Um, I think this is another one that recovery centers do a really great job at working on the stigma that we have. So here in our town, our recovery centers are out there, right? They're at the fair, they're at the rodeo, they're giving back, they're, um, they help some of my clients, you know, figure out how to do different volunteer work. So um, that is incredibly helpful in working on that stigma that we have when it comes to addiction and mental illness. And anything we can do to break down those barriers and those walls is really important. Um, our uh, mission statement at First Step for Life is uh, we, we work on building a community of recovery within the community, you know, and it's kind of like that whole idea that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it also takes a village to help keep a person in their sobriety, um, you know, to to get members of the community active in, you know, even if they, you know, aren't in recovery themselves, but to, you know, become a supporter of recovery. I think that that is like the, the, the first barrier to ending the stigma. Um, and then to have people in the community under, not in the people in the community, um, people who are in recovery, who are coming into our, our center, recognize that, you know, they are worthy of being a part of the community, you know, that it is a good thing to become a, a good active member of society and to give back to the community, you know, where when in active addiction, you know, we tend to take, 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 and take. So we can go to the next slide. So there's a little video connected to that. We'll see if it works. It's not an Idaho video. Can you hear the probably, sound on it? Yeah, it's probably okay, on great. a screen. A recovery community center Can't is see a the place. video though. Okay, let me do this. people in recovery come together to support each other's recovery journey, learn about resources and services, and give back to the community. 
because no two people share the same recovery story or have the same recovery needs. Iowa's recovery community centers support all paths to recovery. Recovery community centers are run by people with a history of substance use and their allies who are committed to providing you one-on-one -on -one support during your recovery journey to build better health, a stronger connection to others, and improved well-being. We know from experience in science that recovery is often a lot easier when it involves people who've been there before you and can help you through the tough times. When you come to a recovery community center, you will be connected to a recovery coach or peer support specialist who will help you develop a recovery plan that meets your unique needs. This may include attending mutual aid meetings like Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, or Smart Recovery, where you can share stories, find connection, or just know that you belong. You may also be directed to other kinds of resources, such as job training programs, childcare, recovery-oriented housing, and community events. We understand that people with lived experience are in a unique position to make a difference. Recovery Community Centers provide opportunities for you to volunteer in your community, get involved with local recovery efforts, and advocate for change to laws, policies, and programs that affect people with a history of substance use. Iowa's Department of Health and Human Services is working hard to expand recovery options that work for you. New recovery community centers. You can probably stop that because we're not in Iowa. Rapids. But they, I thought that was one of the best videos. I searched for a long time. I will say, you know, I do think that the state of Idaho has done a good job funding recovery centers because there was a time um, when recovery centers had to raise all of their own money. Every single dime had to be raised within their community. Um, but the state um, has committed to funding, well, I mean, it is sort of a yearly commitment that we have to ensure that we get, but they have committed to um, providing some base funding for all of our recovery centers. And so I think that one of our roles, I think, when we're connected to recovery centers or treatment center, whatever our role is within the behavioral health field, we have to continue to advocate. So every year when it comes to the governor's recommendation for funding, um, the more we can um, express our support for ongoing continued support of recovery centers. Um, I mean, I, that's, we just, I think that's one of the advocate roles that we need to, to do just so that the higher ups understand the value that recovery centers have within our own community. So um, some of the biggest things that I have found that recovery centers do. So for me, like when I think about case management, coordinating care um, as a treatment center is that um, we, we struggle a little bit in treatment with wait lists and the process, right? So if somebody that wants to come into treatment on my end, they might have to wait a little bit to get an assessment. I can't get them started in treatment the day they walk in the door because we have rules that guide how what how somebody gets set recommended for recovery coaching. Recovery centers, they get to just jump in right at that moment. And yeah. that that is a huge gap for me that they fill every day. That I I I mean if we could put numbers to it, it would be nice to say how many lives can be saved by their ability to immediately put that face to recovery, offer some support. Um, I mean, it's absolutely invaluable given the um, the nature of how many people are seeking treatment, I think, right now. At least in our community, that's that's been a really huge struggle. Um, and so I think when when we try to understand where recoveries fit, recovery centers fit in the treatment scheme. I mean, they fit in every area of treatment, but when we talk about saving lives, sometimes I think they fit at the very beginning because they can offer support where I am not able to leap quite as quickly as I might want to. I don't know if you have anything more, Ashley, but. <clears throat> <clears throat> just to kind of touch on, on the harm reduction side of things was the only thing that I was thinking is um, 
you know, I, uh, I can't tell you how many people I've had come through the doors and they are still using, but maybe they don't want to use as much, or maybe they, you know, are, um, using one type of drug, um, but they're wanting to stop that, but they don't want to stop another. Um, you know, I think because a lot of, uh, the people that I see, um, and, well, uh, particularly in my, uh, in Orofino, where I'm at, a lot of the people who are in um, the the treatment center there in Orofino are also on um, like specialty court. And so, you know, there's, there's drug testing, there's, you know, there's a lot of extra stipulations. So a person who is maybe, you know, not quite ready, but wanting, wanting to change, you know, pre-contemplative maybe, um, you know, to, to be able to have them come in and be like, Hey, you know, I need help. Um, you know, and, and I get to be like, okay, so you're not ready to stop. Let's go ahead and make a plan. Um, you know, we'll set some goals and, um, you know, let's figure out how you can be safe about all of this. And then when you are ready, you know, let's do this. Um, so I think that, you know, on the, on the saving lives aspect of it, I think Sarah, you're, you're exactly right on that. Um, I think that that just to be able to have somebody walk in the door and mm -hmm. be like, hey, I need help and to be able to be like, okay, let's do this, you and me. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Yeah, I just, to me, sometimes I just think that is um, vital. Uh, okay, so what are some of the core elements? So I got a lot of the resources here from, um, there's like a coalition of recovery centers, but that's not the right word. Um, and so a lot of this information came from them. I think it's a combination of SAMHSA, SAMHSA stuff and that sort of stuff. So, so really, I think that it would be nice if recovery centers were like the hub, right? That's where recovery starts. People um, go to the recovery center and they get themselves started and engaged. Um, I really like this statement where it says it should be the heart of the community and it helps to get connected with local recovery communities. I mean, I think that um, recovery centers should be where all people in recovery or seeking help should get started and make a connection. Uh, recovery centers are visible, right? I mean, they're out there in our community. Uh, like I said, like our recovery center, I mean, they volunteer at the fair and the like they make burgers and they do all sorts of stuff at the rodeo, you know, I mean, they're, you know, in there, they're, they're being seen people volunteer to help. And then they get really invested in the things that are important within our community. Um, Laytaw County does a great job at um, being involved. Moscow, it sounds like to me has a lot more community events than maybe Nez Perce County has, um, but they're always talking about fun things they're doing in the community. And that's exciting. I think, you know, I mean, I think those are really exciting opportunities that sometimes we forget about. So they're in a good location where everybody can access. Um, they provide volunteer work. Um, you know, we want them to be a place where the person who's struggling can come, but also family members, friends. Um, we need to know what an ally is, right? So how can we build a community that comes around everybody? Amber, you have your hand up. I do, um, except you moved on really fast. So <laughs> I do that. So let's jump back. Um, so you mentioned that Laytaw County does a really good job because we always have fun things going on. Yeah. That is not necessarily by invite. <laughs> um, so mm -hmm. I highly, highly encourage you to get out there and get a little pushy, force an invite if you need to, it is possible. Um, but that's what we do is we, we, I mean, our, our recovery center is right on main street. That's one of our mantras is we put recovery on main street, um, to break stigma. And so every one of our staff members is always working for that, but you're not going to get an invite unless you get pushy. Yeah, I think that's one of our, you know, the, um, that leadership piece, right? How do we make sure people know who we are, what we are, what we do, uh, what our value is? I think um, sometimes there's a pushy piece to that. And then, you know, it's, I think when we talk about, like I'm saying allies, right? I think 
if the more we get out there, the more we build those allies, the more invites we get, the more stigma we're going to break down. Because it's, I mean, stigma is a tough one. I mean, it, those are some really strong walls. Um, and I sometimes I think we've done a really great job making progress. And then some days I feel like, holy cow, it's still there. And so it can be, you know, encouraging and then really disappointing. Uh, so, okay, we can move on. I think we kind of touched on like where they are, what they do, um, how they kind of function and the resources that they provide. So um, I do think that uh, number 10 talks about um, workshops, trainings, meetings, services, social events. I think that uh, recovery centers do a really good job. You know, they'll host recovery coach trainings. Um, sometimes they'll host a mental health first aid training. Um, they have a lot of community-based meetings. Um, anytime we're doing something that uh, has to do with mental health and addiction, I think um, using utilizing our recovery centers is a really great connection that uh, treatment providers, community members can, you know, tie everything in and make those connections. And that's just going to help people get into the centers, get comfortable, understand what they offer and what support they provide. Okay, we can go on the next slide. So when we look at the Idaho Association, that was the word I was looking at, looking for to pull out of my head earlier. Um, the Idaho Association of Recovery Community Centers, they kind of outline um, their, their own kind of guiding principles and their goals of what peer-based recovery looks like. Um, and so removing barriers, um, one of the big things, and I'm assuming this is nationwide, but you hear it a lot here in Idaho is you're in recovery when you say you are. Uh, and that is a staple when it comes to peer-based recovery. Um, and so making sure that we're not putting our own values or beliefs or stigmas onto somebody else and honoring where somebody is and the work that they put in to be where they are. Um, sometimes I think treatment centers get kind of lost in pathology. So being focused on recovery potential, I think that's a really important thing to recognize. And the, there's a lot of value in that. Um, I don't know if anybody else has anything to add, but um, I think that all of these kind of principles have a lot of um, value in what they can offer within our community, um, kind of recognizing the, the lifelong journey of recovery, the different places that we're going to be from when we start in recovery to, you know, a few years in and recovery centers really being able to kind of provide that vast array of opportunities within that. I think those are all really important. Amber, you don't have to raise your hand. You can just shout it out. <laughs> okay. Um, I apologize for my voice. I've been really sick. I was going to say one of the things that's really um, helpful when dealing with, uh, say, hospitals, doctors, stuff like that, because a lot of times people won't find help until they realize they have a problem, right? That usually takes an ER or something big. One of the things that I tell our colleagues at, at the many different doctor's offices in town is if you have a, a patient or a client who is just adamantly resistant to change, use your re local recovery center. They are a great resource to create that stepping stone and start building that trust in systems again. Um, so I wanna make sure that everyone on the call recognizes that we've had great success in getting referrals down and then we can help them get to that place where they're ready for the help that they need. I think that's a really good point. It's, it can be maybe less scary or less overwhelming to walk into a recovery center, or that would be what I would hope. I mean, I hope nobody would be scared to walk in either way, but I mean, I think the recovery centers, you know, that, that is why they're there. Well, we're able to provide that advocacy piece too. So if it's really just about not feeling like they can communicate, mm -hmm. we get to go with them and help them be their, their best selves. So that's always a piece you wanna, you wanna pitch and make sure that other entities are aware of. Right, yep. All right, we can go to the next slide. So what kinds of things are offered at recovery centers? I mean, really and truly we've kind of touched on some of this, um, a place for anybody that needs support 
um, you know, whether that uh, is mental health or addiction treatment, you know, they're going to offer um, some community-based supports, trying to help them find um, a place to live or resources for housing or transportation services, um, parenting classes, whatever it is that's needed within the community. Um, internet access, um, you know, if we need to fill out a job application, make a resume, whatever that is that somebody's going to need. Um, classes, um, community-based support meetings, um, volunteer opportunities. So it says there's nine recovery centers. Is that still true? Because that's from the Idaho Association. I think that's true. And I think I have a map and a picture of where they all are within our state. I think you know, we happen to have the head of that board on this call. He just is being quiet. I know. Yeah. I, yeah. He's quiet. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we can throw Daryl under the bus if we have to, but yeah, he's going to be quiet over there. Okay, we can go to the next slide. <laughs> so uh, I think that one thing we all need to know is that the research is actually really, really clear when it comes to peer-based support. So peer-based support is very effective. And um, I have found, I mean, I have three peers that work here at our office um, I have found that the, the work that, that what the services they offer, the work that they do, um, I mean, it's just amazing. And so I think when we, when we recognize that, um, we can really kind of take advantage of collaboration with the recovery centers. Um, and so there is a lot of really great research that supports the benefits of recovery centers. We can go to the next slide. So recovery center is not a treatment center. It's not a 12 step club. It's not a drop-in center. It's not a hangout. It's not a crisis center. Although the crisis center is at the Lake Tahoe County, they're connected, but they're not the same thing. Um, but they have a combination of all of it, right? They have resources and they have services that can connect somebody to what they need, um, the supports that they need, all of that. Okay, next slide. I think, yeah. So there I is think it's important to just to touch back on one thing where it says it's, it's not a hangout, uh, which is true. It's not. But what I always tell people is, you know, our doors are open. And if you need a safe place to come in and hang out, then then you come here, have a cup of coffee. You know, I used to keep uh, rock painting supplies and like coloring stuff or, you know, whatever. So if you're bored, come in just so you know, like this is a place where you don't have to, you know, like you don't have to be afraid of your cravings. Um, you've got people here that can support you if it gets really bad. But, you know, if you just need a place to be that's safe and sober, come on, come hang out. We do that too. We, exactly. we check out hangout though, because we want them to hang out. We want them to create that recovery community. So we changed it to not your kick it spot. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're surrounded by sober supports that are going to help you stay focused on the goals that you have. And if that means you need to be here because you're struggling, uh, be here, right? Let's be where we're healthy. Uh, so this is just a, this shows you where all the different recovery centers are. So if you're near one, I would challenge you all to go there. Go and look around, go and meet the people that are there. Um, build some relationships, build connections, uh, volunteer, help out, do whatever you want to do. I think that's the last slide. Oh, there's the contact information for every center, for everybody to have. Phone numbers, addresses, emails. And these Question? slides will be posted to our website too, if you want to come back and reference these. Questions, thoughts? Do you guys have any partnerships with like your jail? I know in Boise, Pier has connections with the jail. So when people are getting out, they have somewhere to go and kind of gives them like a map in preparation for being released. We do in um, both Lewiston and Orofino. Uh, the Lewiston jail, actually, um, the first step for life phone number is a free number to call. And that's posted on the walls there. Um, we did have recovery coaches going in and meeting with people within the jail for a little while. Um, we kind of had to pull back on that due to staffing changes. But um, we work very closely with any you know, reentry 
stuff. Um, like I said, you know, we're, we're pretty, um, I would say actively involved with people who are going to treatment courts. Um, so we've got relationships with the treatment court teams. Um, and because uh, First Step for Life also has um, some recovery housing, uh, both in Orofino and in Lewiston, that is something that uh, the treatment courts utilize for people who are getting out of jail and going into treatment teams that they can have a sober living place. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a lot of a lot of working in collaboration, and and I, I I'll be honest and tell you that um, the very first place that I went to when I got out of prison was First Step for Life. I had never even you know I didn't know anything about it, um, but I had a mentor who picked me up, <clears throat> and she took me to First Step where you know like they gave me a backpack. Um, with some clothes, some food, and just like a couple of things to get me by until I was ready, you know, I was going into an Oxford house, I had nothing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that got me by, she got me set up with um, a recovery coach right away, we started working on like, you know, how I was going to get food stamps and a cell phone and, you know, start applying for jobs and all of those things. So it's a, it's an invaluable resource for reentry. Um, <clears throat> we, we love that. We have an entire reentry program here in Lytaw County as well. We're able to provide rental assistance um, for the first couple of months if needed. Um, we help them get signed up for everything. Uh, we even have partnership with the male Oxford House. So it reentry is so pivotal. Um, it, I don't think anybody should be without it. I really don't. What other questions do we have for Sarah today? I just wanted to touch on one more thing. Um, you know, when we're talking about the collaboration between the, the recovery centers and the treatment centers, uh, I know I personally have walked my peers through the doors of the treatment centers to help them get set up. I've had uh, clinicians from the treatment centers walk their people over to me to get them set up with recovery coaching. You know, um, it, it's important to have that partnership because, you know, usually there's, there's that connection, you know, and we want our, we want our peers to know that, you know, we trust the treatment centers. So, so they can too, you know, and the treatment centers trust us, you know, so there's, I think that that's a really important piece to it is, you know, I'm happy to take my people into any of the treatment centers around here to help them get treatment. You know, they're, when they come into my doors, it's not just about, you know, that I have to be the one to provide the services. No, I know that it, it takes, like I said, it takes a village, you know, so that we need to get the treatment teams on board. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that it, we, we've got a really good collaboration in our area. I'm very proud of that.